Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot, and welcome to the next video in my deck collection series. Today we will be taking a look at my Old World Tarot and Oracle decks. So these are the decks that stick a little bit closer to tradition in terms of their imagery or their structure, as well as some decks that could be considered contemporary but have an Old World or Age feel to them. So for some of them, the Old Worldiness is more about the aesthetic than the content. But like I mentioned in several of my other videos, I had to find a line to draw somewhere or these videos would have just been way too long. There are a total of 14 decks featured in this video and you will find a complete list in the description box below. As I've mentioned before, I have included both tarot and oracle in this video, but you will find all of the oracle decks at the end. Let's step back a bit and wander through my old world tarot and oracle decks. So first up in our little travel through my old world style decks um, is my Tarot de Maria Celia. And this one comes in this cute little tin, which I'm sure you guys have all seen. Great for traveling. This is one of my travel decks. This along with my um, Rider Waite Centennial in a tin. They pair great together. Fabulous for traveling together and reading with together. I have this beautiful back, which is just this soft, lovely little design. I have edged mine in multiple colors. Um, again, that's in, that's in my deck mod video, if you wanna check that out. But look at this hermit. Oh, these cards are so sweet. I love this deck. The court cards are so beautiful. Just a beautiful moon. And the miners are just so gorgeously illustrated. I love the colors. It's very soft, very pleasing. It's just a, such a sweet little Marseille that I think, I think is probably one of my favorite Marseilles for sure. But it's just such a cute little deck. And it, it does go a lot of places with me. It tends to end up in my bag quite often. And I get a lot of people ask me, you know, to bring this when I go places to, to do readings with this one in particular. It resonates with people quite frequently. Um, this is just the most awesome death card. I love it. I love the little star speckled purple background. Anyway, yes, such a cutie. Um, definitely done a lot of readings with that one. That is the Tarot de Maria Celia. So up next we have the Le Corte de Terioki and this Oh, I love this deck. It's one of my favorites. This deck has like the sweetest little faced majors in um, quartz. And the minors are really beautiful too. It's got that great like old style paper. Um, in fact, I love the uh, majors so much in this deck that I actually printed off a copy of the um, Empress and the High Priestess and framed them and, and hung them up above my my reading table, my work table. And you'll probably see it in a video when I have, you know, when I'm in front of the camera and there's one of them. Anyway, it just, I oh, love this deck. It's so beautiful. I love that it's long and skinny. It like, it pairs really well in other readings or with other cards for readings as well. It's just a gorgeous deck. Love the death card in this one. Apparently that's just a card I really like in old decks or old style decks. There she is, there's the Pappas she's hanging up to. So yeah, anyway, isn't that just, that's just so cool. I'm sure you guys have seen it before, but it's so cool. I love this deck. Just an awesome little kind of vintage old world addition to my collection. So that's the Le Corte Terioki. So next up we have my Universal Worth Tarot, which you probably can't tell by the backs because I rebacked it. So I did actually reback this in the brown contact paper and I did edge it in brown and I trimmed it. And I talk about this more in my deck mod video. I just felt like that matched better and it's super durable now. Like just a really, really durable deck, which is great because I do use this one quite frequently. Um, I just love the artwork in this deck. I love the colors in particular. Um, and it uses uh, Picard Miners, which is just fabulous. The Crystal Tarot has um, pseudo Picard Miners. But I just think this is like, oh, such a gorgeous deck. I love it. Like, oh, look at that. Look at that. I can say that over every card. I just think they are all so beautiful. I love the color palette. It's a great reader. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite pip decks. 
And it's just, yeah, it's a deck that I, I actually use all the time. It's so fabulous. Not my favorite strength card. Um, but that's about the only real complaint I have in this deck. Not that it's really a complaint, but it just reads beautifully. I love the color palette. I think that's the big thing. And I absolutely love the Picard Miners because I really uh, resonate with the way those read. I think it's just gorgeous. Love this deck. Definitely one of my favorites, one I read with quite frequently. And now that it is in covered in contact paper, it is super durable now. So that is the Universal Worth Tarot. Next we have the Golden Tarot, and this is the cat black version because there are several tarots out there called the Golden Tarot. This one has one of my favorite backs. I absolutely love the back of these cards. It's just gorgeous. Um, they are gold gilded, which I, I'm not a fan of gilding. They hurt, it hurts my hands. I don't really like it, but it, I mean, it does look beautiful on this deck. Um, I have actually thought about trimming it just to get rid of that gold gilding on there. Um, but I kind of don't want to lose the borders. Anyway, it's in order because I was, I'm working on a review of it. Not my usual thing. But I just love the images in this. I love the artwork. Um, it's very medieval too, which I do really love that about it. And um, it's a really great reader. It's very Rider Waite Smith, so it's a really easy reader. And it just, it pairs beautifully with so many other decks. But I just think it's gorgeous. It's really, I mean, that's really the main thing about it. This is my favorite Eight of Wands. I absolutely love this Eight of Wands. I think it's just fantastic. So anyway, yeah. I mean, I this is one of those decks that I can just sit and look at the beautiful images because I think they're so gorgeous. There's so much going on. Look how beautiful is that Seven of Coins. So that is the Cat Black Golden Tarot. Up next, we have my other golden tarot, and this is the Frascanzi Forza deck by Mary Packard. Um, this, I, it comes in this gigantic box, which generally sits on my shelf. Deck sits in here, book is in here. The book is lovely, I love the book. It's kind of big to have on camera, but I did just want to show you that because it's beautiful. I love the, the majors and the courts in this deck. They're by far some of my favorites. I think they're just stunningly illustrated. Um, the miners are beautiful too. They look like they're almost like stitched on, um, on linen or something. Really pretty. Isn't she beautiful? It's just a gorgeous deck. I tend to only, when I use this, I tend to use it kind of more as a majors only deck, even though it is a full 78 cards, but I just absolutely love the majors in it. So I tend to use those more than anything else. So that is the Golden Tarot. Next we have the Old English Tarot, which is a fairly new deck in my collection. Um, it's still living in its box. I haven't made a bag for it yet. I love the bags, they're so cute. Um, this deck is just, it's kind of like a sweet Marseille. It's really just kind of a cute little deck. I, the characters are really cute in it. Have I said cute too many times? Um, it just kind of has this, I want to say like a Paulina Cassidy vibe to it. It actually, the um, I have actually done a, a little pairing with this with the Paulina tarot and they kind of work really cool together. That was the other thing I like about this is I'm flipping through it. I like that the, the um, miners are, they are pip style miners, but you have these little illustrations going on at the bottom, which just really cute and just kind of add a little bit of charm to this deck. I like the quartz. I think they're really cool looking. So it's just kind of like a sweet Marseille. It's a just a great easy reader deck. It's really cute. It pairs really well with other decks, especially um, I found that it actually pairs really well with really busy or with busier decks because the miners are a little bit more understated and even like the um, majors are a bit more a bit understated so it actually pairs well with more busier decks because it really doesn't um, conflict with them so anyway that is the old English tarot 
Up next we have my new love, my new favorite deck. This is the Hughes Tarot. And this deck has got me through some trying times, so we are we are pretty well connected now. Um, I just love the imagery in this deck. It's just so calming and so soothing. Um, it's a very neutral deck, but I also find it to be a very um, sort of supportive, but supportive but not affirmative. If that makes sense, like it doesn't it doesn't shy away from the hard truths, but it delivers it in a really um, supportive way, which I just absolutely love about this deck. And maybe it's because, you know, this was a deck that I turned to when I was um, ill. So it's just been a really fabulous, fabulous deck. We've quite bonded. <laughs> um, anyway, so I won't, I've rambled on about this deck in other videos, so I won't ramble too much now, but I just think it's fabulous. I, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's earned itself a place for sure. Not only in my collection, but in my heart. Aww. Right? Okay, so that is the Hughes Tarot. And this one is out of print. Um, you can still find it on eBay, but it is at this moment, well, at the time I'm filming this video, it is out of print. So sorry about that, but you can still find it. And next we have the Tildwick Tarot. So here's the um, gorgeous backs. Again, it's it's gilded. Um, the gilding isn't too bad on this one. It's not as thick as like on the Cat Black Golden Tarot, so I can work with it a little bit easier, but this is just a stunning deck. And I, I talked about this deck in other videos. Um, it's a little bit muddled, so it's a little bit hard to see the images, so you have to really like kind of sink into them. And I think for that fact alone, this is one of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, it makes it a really wonderful meditative deck. And um, I haven't done any readings with it at this point. I've just done some meditative work with it and um, looked through it a ton and just really tried to sink into these images and let them speak rather than trying to do any sort of readings with them at this point. But um, I do plan on doing readings with this deck, of course. But it's just so interesting. So such an interesting take. There are no people, so it's all um, scenes from um, a household, gardens, um, that kind of thing. So you have a lot of mantles, you have a lot of like uh, fountains and gardens and cups and walls and that kind of thing. Um, like here's a little potting shed. It's just really interesting. Um, I could have very easily have put this in my contemporary decks because it is, I think, a very contemporary take on the tarot. But the feeling of it, the vibe of it, the imagery in it is very old world to me. It feels like walking into like an English manor where you would find all of these rooms and all of these... Um, you know, scenes taking place. Love this devil. I think that's just so awesome. Let's just put that one on top. I think that's an awesome devil. So anyways, just really beautiful. Um, I don't know if it's 100% out of print. I was able to get it on Collect Tarot. It might be out of print. Um, it's not a super easy deck to find, so I apologize for that. But if you can find it, I think it's definitely... Um, definitely worth getting a hold of, although I paid a small fortune for it, just in all, in all honesty, but totally worth it. I would totally do it again. So that is the Tildwick Tarot. It is the Tarot of the Holy Light. Um, this is a deck that, again, like the Tildwick, probably could have gone in contemporary because it does have a very unique and contemporary take on the tarot. But when it came down time to kind of put my cards into categories, um, my contemporary category was quite full. So I decided to move it into my old world just because it does have an old world feel to it. Um, I've said in a previous video, I'm not a, a huge fan of this artwork. I'm, I'm really just not. I do, however, love the book and that the actual full um, book that comes with it, or not, 
not that comes with it, that you can buy separately. So I have that on my Kindle and I absolutely love it. And I've read it many times because I just think Christine um, Payne Teller's take on the tarot is so interesting. Um, so I think you could definitely call this a contemporary deck, but because of the imagery, it kind of has an old world feel to me, like, you know, old mystic feel. Again, like I said, the imagery is, whoops, really not my favorite. Um, I think it's kind of garish and it's, you know, it's just kind of, it is what it is. But anyway, there's so much going on in the cards and there's so much that relates back to the book that I absolutely love. So I decided to um, go ahead and get the deck, which I got in a trade, just so that I could have the deck to compare to as I was working through the book. Um, not sure if it's a deck I'll really use so much as a study deck, but either way, um, it goes along with, um, with the book. And so that was why I wanted to get my hands on a copy of it. So that is Tarot of the Holy Light. And here we have the Wisdom Seekers Tarot, which I have done a review of this deck on my channel. Um, and since then I have trimmed it. The backs are still totally uninspiring. Um, and I have edged it and I've talked about this deck more in my um, deck mods video, but this is very much a pip deck and I like, I won't go too, too much into it because I have a whole review up of it, but I love this deck. It's such a sweet little deck. Um, but I put it in my sort of old world decks because it kind of feels like an old storybook to me. So like, look how beautiful, look how beautiful they are. Um, love this deck. It's definitely a pip style deck, although I think the um, majors and the quartz really shine in this deck. Um, yeah, they're just beautiful. I mean, I'm not, again, I have a full review, so I'm not going to go into it, but so you can see the um, minors are very pipish, which I don't mind at all. I like a pip deck, but I just think it's really the quartz and the majors that shine in this deck that I love so much. This looks like a storybook. Like an old storybook. And it hasn't, it hasn't found itself a new, new home yet, a new bag. So it kind of has been knocking around in this big old box. So that is the Wisdom Seekers Tarot. Next we have the um, Pam's Vintage. Little thing I just... Okay. Um, anyway, this is the like pocket size version. Um, this is an indie deck and I believe there is a bigger version. I have edged this one. And it is just basically, it is Pixie's art um, that's been overlaid with texture and um, little uh, details just to make it look old and vintage. And I like it. I mean, it's it definitely makes it look old. It's like one of my favorite little pocket decks if I'm looking for a straight up um, weightsmith. Because that is what this deck is. And it's just been redone in this kind of old worldly style, which I really like actually. It's very vintage looking, um, you know, that's the name. But um, some of the images are a little bit muddled and that's probably just because there's a lot of, um, you know, texture and sort of pseudo stamping over the top of it. But still, if you're familiar with the deck, it, that's not a problem at all. I love that it's borderless and I love that it's pocket size. So it's one of my favorite little, um, uh, Waitsmith Tarot's. So that is Pam's Vintage Tarot. So next we have the Super Oracle and this is a deck that I wasn't entirely sure which of which section of my collection I wanted to live to put it in. Um, love the backs of this deck. The cardstock is nice but it's super slippery and this this deck just flies everywhere. Um, I ended up putting it in this collection because although it does have a very sort of air in the mind feel about it. It's very much um, very much a deck based on like Jungian principles, but it just has the artwork, has this sort of old world feel. It looks like it's been, you know, inked on old parchment paper. So this is where it ended up. This is one of my favorite oracles. Um, I use this one quite frequently, um, especially when when it's readings that have to do with the mind or readings of the mind. Um, it's just a deck that works really well for that for me. And I love the nothing card. How cool is that? Um, yeah. And I definitely read it intuitively because I do not have the book. I would really like the book, but I just haven't gotten around to 
um, purchasing it, but it's just a gorgeous deck. The artwork is just, it's just stunning. It reads wonderfully. Um, I get enough intuitive off between the title and the artwork that I really don't need the book, but I would be really interested to read the book, so I will probably get it at some point. I'm sorry you've seen this deck many, many times. It's one of my favorites. I have not edged it yet, but that is definitely on my to-do list because I have a stamp that matches this background that that's what it's going to get edged in. Anyway, see, I get super excited about deck mods. So that is the Supra Oracle. So next up we have Oracle of the Mystical Moments, which is one of my favorite oracles. Oh no, my candle is about to die. I've been, been recording too much. Um, has beautiful backgrounds. Again, copyright. Seriously, U.S. Games, stop with the copyright. Like, we know it's yours. We get it. Um, I have edged this in like a um, an antique type uh, technique. It's in my deck mod video if you want to check that out. But this, this deck has a very vintage, old-worldy feel to me, which I absolutely love. Um, it's just, oh, it's such a stunning Oracle deck. Now, I do have to say that I don't always agree with the um, titles or keywords or whatever you want to call them on the bottom. Um, I have read the deck or the book a couple of different times, and as beautifully written as it is, I don't always agree with those either. Um, I have thought about just trimming these off, but for the most part, it really doesn't impede my ability to read with this deck because I do read with it rather intuitively. And it pairs really well with a lot of different decks, or at least a lot of different decks I own. Um, I think my favorite to pair it with is the Pagan Otherworlds. It just looks stunning with that deck. And I think I've heard that the um, artist, Katrina Wellstein, I think she is doing a tarot deck. And I am super excited for that because I absolutely love her artwork. So anyway, it's just oh, such a gorgeous deck. And I love this card. It makes me laugh every time it comes up. It's so cute. Um, anyway, this is one of my favorites. Oh, so beautiful. Anyway, I could. this is one of those I could just go on and on about because I absolutely love it. Look how cute. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, it's a gorgeous deck. Like I said, I read with it more intuitively than following the keywords, but it's stunning and I love it and I pair it with all kinds of different things and it works beautifully. So that is Oracle of Mystical Moments. So next we have the Botanical Inspirations deck, and this is, at the time I'm filming this, my newest oracle, like it seriously just got here yesterday. Um, I've seen tons of pictures of it online. I think it's gorgeous. I do not love when they put text on the back of the cards. Like that's almost as bad as a copyright. Don't put text, no, none, no text on the back. Don't care if it's copyright or, you know, a title or what have you, just don't do it. So I, ha I just got it, so I haven't edged it, but I am going to edge this deck. Um, I think this deck, it's totally in order, because like I said, I got it yesterday. It's so beautiful. I love the vintage look of the, um, of the cards. I love that it looks like, you know, flowers on old paper. I'm generally not a fan of a ton of text on my cards, but I do like that this one just has the um, keywords and then a quote. So I like that more than I like an extended, you know, message. Just for me, if I want an extended message, I'll go to the book. So I do like that it just has the, the um, quote on there because I do love quotes. I love writing in general, just not a ton of it on my cards. Because to me, this is a visual medium, not, not a written medium. But that's just me. Anyway. It's a beautiful deck. It's very vintage. I have a lot of decks that I'm excited to pair this with. And it's just, yeah, stunning. I love vintagey things. So anyway, I'm excited to start working with it because I have not yet because it just came in yesterday. So that is the Botanical Inspirations. Thank you so much for checking out my collection of old world tarot and oracle decks. I would love to hear about the old style decks in your collection or your thoughts on the ones I've shown here, so feel free to leave a comment below. And if you'd like to check out the rest of my deck collection, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell for notifications. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.